Episode 17, Kyoto's Sister School Exchange Event Team Battle 3. A little flashback before the Maki Miwa fight. So she's deliberately pairing up against her. <laughs> yeah, she wasn't talking out of truth. She was just talking out of, like, disdain for her sister. Oof. At least there's one student in this whole tournament that is not okay with killing or is not out to deliberately kill their opponent. Yeah, well, I guess she's had a lot to make up for. I mean, she's trained extra hard. Definitely got a, a chip on her shoulder, more than one. Oh, wait, she can use a domain? A simple domain. But a domain nonetheless? Full auto reflex. This is such a video game. <laughs> video game technique. She knows, maybe. Don't get within 2.21 meters. A what? A what? Yeah, what? That's bold of her. She's trying to make a statement? What happened to the auto-reflex? <laughs> I guess you couldn't see. Oh, and she gets thrown. He was using half her energy as admiring her. Oh, and she got her sword. Who? What is this crow? Are you here to send underlings off to their deaths, Demon Slayer style? I think that was visually my favorite combat section of this tournament so far. It was pretty fun. There was something about that that was really satisfying. Right, so it's her ability. She's doing it deliberately, though. And she's not even trying to hide it. At all. Okay. <laughs> Especially with big bro Toto on our side now. That just changed everything. Right, those sort of pairing up. Lucky. That was easy. Oh, broom decoy. Damn. That looked way more painful than I expected. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> what is she getting at? Oh. Ooh. It meant beauty as well? This whole society is coming down. This whole Jujutsu establishment is not on a strong footing. They're gonna get picked apart by the enemy side. Assuming what she's saying is true. The fact that they have the luxury to think about these things, they're unfocused on what, what is important. It's calcified. They're overconfident and arrogant. That's how it feels to me. I mean, it's probably a testament to their success, you know? One of the things essential to human prosperity seems to be the desire to climb, to conquer challenges and, and rise to new heights, and that's a really powerful force under adversity. But the thing is, it doesn't really get turned off when things are good. We can almost never be satisfied, collectively, and if all the immediate actual problems have been solved, we'll invent new games to play. Personally, I believe that the act of finding meaning or purpose is not some idle pursuit. It's not just a, an abstract question for discussion. It is something fundamental to the human experience and not consciously knowing what is the best thing to orient oneself towards and having sort of confusion about what meaning and purpose is does not mean that we're currently not pointed and oriented at something. Everyone is always consciously or unconsciously directed towards some kind of purpose and I think if people are not conscious of that then it's sort of a, a roll of the dice what that is and not all orientations you know not all purposes let's say are built equal and so you get some really weird stuff coming out of prosperity sometimes when there's no obvious problem to solve and then add to that the fact that things go well for long enough, you think that's the default state of things. You forget the fact that there's danger out there or even the hardships you yourself have experienced. We just give a much higher weighting to what currently is and how things currently feel. I wouldn't even be surprised if that's somehow connected to the insider. The insider probably has a, a higher calling in their minds. This society is just so ripe for the picking, in my opinion. I don't, I don't see it lasting. Why? Why am I? Yeah, she seems like she's had a lot of battle experience. Huh. Why? Ooh, is this actually a, a double attack? He's lurking. What is this? What is she saying about Mai? I'm curious. What is she getting at? Oh, here we go. 
The Zenin Clan, okay. Huh. Doesn't that speak extra well of Maki then? Well, that explains a whole lot. That also, I mean, is a little bit more compelling for this girl, given the argument that I've seen so far that they, they actually just think of Yuji as a curse and a, and a non-human. I guess it's still alarming that they'd be able to think that, but I also feel like it's not unrealistic, especially hearing her say it like that. I guess, sadly, it's really easy to objectify people in that way. And it's not necessarily even an evil thing at first. I think the fact that other people have the same level of humanity as you, even people you've never met, even people you can't fully conceptualize in you know the full gravity of their, their lives, perhaps is not innate you know, maybe it's something that has to be learned. Even understanding that conceptually, there's always going to be a little bit of loss there. You know, I think it's tough to fully get that or fully feel it. You know, how do you feel somebody else's humanity in the same gravity that you feel your own? I, it's hard for me to imagine. Then take someone who I've never met or, you know, have not really interacted with that strongly. A and B is an emotional risk to me, is some kind of threat. Yeah, as I said, it's not great, but it's believable. <laughs> There you go. Panda was saying something very similar. It's also so, so much excuses. Right, yeah, exactly. They both were from the same family. And she has less skill. I, it might be this easy. It might be just a matter of realizing he's human, you know, or just, just suggesting it would go a long way. She was setting this up. Set up a minefield. I'm suddenly getting Attack on Titan. Forest flashbacks. Hope it ends up better for these kids. Oh, she got a... Huh. Made a little voodoo doll. There you go. ハハハハ <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, this is awesome. Again, it's a relief to see them actually considering this, not just going for the kill. That's a squeaky hammer. That's adorable. Watch this be like incredibly painful though. <laughs> and that is about as painful as you can make that look, the toy hammer. No, just stop with the guns in these shows. It's interesting to me that two out of the last two episodes sort of covered the same idea, at least in some form. Panda said that last episode. Something like, hardship does not necessarily make you right. I almost feel like for evaluating someone's character, it's gonna come down to not any kind of circumstance but their actions. I think that might be obvious when you look at it in terms of being born with great things. It's like, well, you did nothing to deserve that. You know, who are you as a person? But the same is true for people who are unfortunate in being victims of negative circumstance. There's a difference between being able to have sympathy for someone and saying someone has strong character. Forgive this ridiculous analogy, I'm just using an extreme to make a point. But if I cross the street and get hit by a car, it doesn't make me a good person. It just means I got hit by a car and it's unfortunate. You know, maybe my pain will be sympathetic and the fact that it's unfortunate fortunate is understandable, but it doesn't speak in any way to who I am as a person. What will is what I do from there on, and the choices I make. You know, I think ultimately it's going to come down to choice. Do I sink into despair? Do I use my pain as justification to do terrible things to others? Do I make excuses? Do I blame the world? Or do I do the things that are in my power to make myself better and do what I feel is right? A lot of it is going to come down to my choice, which is why I think one of the most contentious fields of discussion is whether or not there is choice at all. You know, I think people who would seek to use suffering as sort of a, a badge of merit realize on some level that they must destroy the element of choice in order for that to be valid. I mean, thinking back to Attack on Titan, that was really where a lot of the crux of it came down to. It, it was whether or not Eren had a choice. People will willingly remove options in order to kind of stay in a mentality that's more comfortable, where, well, there's nothing I could have done anyway. And I also think that's exactly why it's satisfying to hear her answer. Critically, it's not denying that the negative things exist it's more like, well, that's not in my control. However, I do have control in these key ways, and so I'm going to do my best along those lines to be great despite the, the adversity. Am I wrong to say that that's something that is magnetic, just fundamentally? Does that not contain, in some sense, a key insight into which is the, the more robust outlook? A way this is often framed is that to think along those lines in terms of what you can do and, and who you want to be is to and somehow be a, a naive optimist, but I don't see that necessarily being the case. I think being strong definitely does not mean ignoring the reality. It means understanding the reality, but not overstating its impact on what you're able to do. Taking Maya and Maki, 
their life is abysmal when imagining their lives as children who arguably have a lot less choice than adults. But as adults, the way that it becomes painful is them committing to this path and having accepted willingly, at this point, I would argue as adults, the idea that fitting into the Zenin clan is paramount to everything and is the purpose of their lives. If they were to depart from that path, even in just conceptual ways, they would cease to be victims of their own family, at least in this present moment. That ended up just being a, a really great, awesome moment for Nobara. He's tapped out. His mistake was going up against Panda. You can see where her focus is, what she values, Momo. And there's some tenderness between them, too. And of course, the sisters pair up. どう答えても角立つ。術師としての話よ。呪術云々はまだよくわかんねえけど、喧嘩は超強い。だからだ。心身っていうか、少々seems <笑> Yeah, I mean, it's a route. The perspective will change everything, I think. If her goal is to make her family accept her and like her, that, to me, feels like a losing battle. If her goal is to prove herself to herself using winning her family's game as a benchmark for that, becoming a successful Jujutsu Sorcerer, that feels different to me because it's, it's actionable and it's about her. Even if the pursuit of those two different goals is identical. I wonder if that'll end up being the separation between Maya and Maki. Mai being still sort of in that world, not having been able to relinquish that need for the approval, whereas Maki, I suppose, has in some regard, perhaps just because she had no other choice. <laughs> he doesn't have to imagine it that hard. He's, his life is in a lot of danger. Oh, well, I guess he didn't know that back then. That was amazingly fast. This is sort of the leap you gotta you gotta make when you allow guns <laughs> and this kind of thing. Oh, that's speed though. That's probably terrifying. She can see, but Maki can't. Poor guy just probably wanted someone to pay attention to it. I mean, in that situation, it helps that you couldn't see it. Hmm, <laughs> Maki's the one who is freer. <laughs> this is the clan leader? Oh, wow. That's sort of great, though. I like it. Oh, Put that on her sister. This is the first trial, I suppose. Wouldn't be a trial if it didn't hurt. Yeah, from this hate, it's more like a, I don't know, it's a fear. This is terrifying. You can just hear the, hear the footsteps. You get a version of the mid-card theme. Oh, she was counting. It's a revolver ocelot battle all over again. Where'd she get the seventh shot? She got the nerf gun handle extension. Oh, it's a technique. Oh, she can do a bullet alchemy. It's also like um, Momo and My Hero Academia. There's a lot going on with this pair, so I'm not sure I'm reading it right. Because actually that scene with the leader made it seem like Maki actually has their approval in some sense. It's more like a test for leadership. He might on some level acknowledge that Maki is right for the role if certain things are, are tweaked. So it doesn't seem like he's given up on her, like I first thought. Or like they first seem to imply that she was just an outcast. But either way, I can imagine the fact that she was born with less skill being to her advantage. Because she's not getting positive feedback for what she is and so she's forced to look elsewhere for it you know to find it on her own maybe whereas Mai has enough talent that she's going to get praised and she's going to learn to identify with that and that's going to keep her somewhat hooked these are different characters but i think there's a similar thing that happens in 
Avatar with Zuko versus Azula, right? I think it's Zuko's lack of aptitude in his parents' eyes that in some sense helps protect him. It's Azula's talent that leads to her praise, which leads to her sort of being addicted to that world, you know, creating that value structure in her own mind of what life is. The same is true for people who are really heavily praised for certain gifts. Those gifts can quickly turn into curses if they become crutches that cause stagnation in, in other key areas. You know, people who are trying to find their place will work a lot harder and will explore a lot longer. <laughs> Interesting. And you fell for it. She says, crying. She just caught that with her hand. You just don't have it, Mai. Just lost it. Totally lost it. This is not it. Yeah, this is just sadness. And suddenly she's vulnerable. You can stop. Oof. Damn, what a line. She just seems exhausted. She hasn't, though. No, I mean, as much as it hurts, it seems like, she, you know, she's pulled Mai out of something that she acknowledges herself as a whole. Even if she's, you know, exhausted, even if it's difficult. Nah. No one's buying it. Mai and Nobara retired. One down for each. Tokyo school's still ahead though, no? Way ahead considering Toto is <laughs> on our side. <laughs> they basically won, as far as I see it. Barring the entrance of villains, which is a real possibility in tournament arcs. It seems like one of the larger themes about this show is choice and perspective among among darkness. From Panda's comment last episode that hardship doesn't make you right, to Nobara's great monologue about how she understands all those things but still can find strength in them, as long as they're of her own choosing, to the battle between Mai and Maki, and the fact that Mai sort of wants to hide and allow herself to descend into a safety that she knows on some level is wrong for her, whereas Maki refuses to stop fighting to climb out of it, paints a certain picture, I think, about where heroism lies in the show and i think that might even become more apparent when considering the fact that the enemies or the villains are, are curses which are basically shorthand for human misery just to throw out a, a mid first season interpretation of some of the themes that seem to be, be developing perhaps one of the methods to exercise human misery is rejecting the idea that life is fruitless or, or meaningless as mojito put it and is instead a, a matter of finding meaning through choice and responsibility for one's own outlook and life we can continue to walk the path we've chosen, speaking of which. Jujutsu Sampo! Best girl, Miwa. Whoops. When your classmates steal your edamame. That's just dirty. Like I said, this society's ready to fall. Doom is imminent. You live in a world where you can just eat people's edamame without saying anything. Uh, that's not equivalent, I'm sorry. No more. No more cup ramen. Milk and... What? I'm alarmed. Oh, I was not expecting that. I could... I, I don't know, I could see it. I could see it. Some creamy ramen. This is impressive uh, ramen technique for someone who hasn't even gone to college yet. This is like... Yeah, this is next level. No, 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 but I know from experience, people who know how to cook cup ramen like that have eaten way too much cup ramen. That's why they know those methods. It was a matter of survival. <laughs> Whoops. Is that foreshadowing? <laughs> so this tournament arc so far has really delivered the tournament arc goods. <laughs> I mean, this is why we tournament arc, right? It's to uncover the character's motivations and best traits through effort and battle and clashing against each other. It all ends up being ideological in the end, I think, if it's done right. The battle stuff often just, you know, being a stand-in for characteristics, personality attributes, but a surprisingly touching look for for Mai, moments of real sincerity and heart. A great look for Maki, I think, adding a lot more richness to her motivation and the fact that she has a chip on her shoulder. And also in a way that's, that's kind of cool and I didn't expect, that it's, it's not really about her showing her family exclusively. It's bigger than that. It's about returning to the head of the family, speaking of Zuko, which is cooler than just like, I hate my family and I'm gonna show them. So with these few episodes down, I'm really excited to see how the tournament arc continues to shape up. And you know, 
again, there's also a possibility that it's not just going to be a tournament arc. Although it would be fine if it was. Before the video ends, I have to give a very, very long, way long overdue thank you to all my patrons for all the support, for making this channel possible, for making these videos possible, for being all around amazing people day in, day out, for so consistently providing an unbelievable amount of insight and value into these shows and into these videos. It's something that I continue to be blown away by, and although I've said it countless times, it never ceases to be true. In fact, it only gets more true how blown away I am by how how great you guys are. So thank you for everything. Also, shout out to those who joined the, the top tier on Patreon. Alex Dragas, Juice, Mysterious Thing, Max Wiggler, Truman Schroeder, Reek herself, Obina Akalo, Cameron, and Donald. Thank you to you. Thank you to all patrons. Thank you to everybody for watching, for all the love and support. See you guys very soon for the next episode of Jujutsu Kaisen.